Well, hello and welcome to another Teleaquarium here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. Uh, as always, my name is Alex and uh, we're here bringing the aquarium to you, even though you might not be able to visit us in person right now. Uh, so we're doing these Teleaquarium programs just every day on our YouTube channel. Uh, so try to catch those. If you like them, you know, subscribe to our channel, give this video a nice thumbs up, uh, and we'll hopefully keep making these for you. Uh, if you'd also like to know more about the Alaska Sea Life Center, uh, and maybe even donate if you're liking these programs, uh, there's a link for that down in the description below. But what we're going to be doing today is uh, actually kind of a fun little craft, fun little activity. Uh, this is one that I really enjoy, and this is good if you, you know, if you've got a, a, a youngin at home uh, kind of interested in water, interested in the ocean, maybe interested in submarines. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, maybe you are the youngster, you know, at heart or physically, and you just want to uh, make some sort of cool water toy. Uh, or maybe you're a teacher looking for ideas of something to do with your class uh, with homemade supplies, if you're teaching um, over the internet, for example. So what we're going to be doing today is actually making something called a Cartesian diver. Uh, and it's uh, really an interesting, um, I don't know, I, I would, I'd say it's a toy. You can certainly uh, kind of have fun with it. Uh, you can make a, a, a toy out of it or a game out of it even. Um, but it's an interesting example of uh, some physics at work. And so before we get to the Cartesian diver, uh, I'm going to walk us through step by step on what we are going to uh, need to do in order to make one. I'll give you the supplies. Uh, if you've got an eyedropper, you can't really see that very well. If you've got an eyedropper, go ahead and grab that. And you may not. You're like, Alex, I don't have any eyedroppers in this house. Well, that's okay. Go find yourself a pen. Uh, and what we're looking for is a pen cap that uh, has the little, the little pocket pincher right here. Yeah, so that, uh, that's what we want, a little pen cap. If it doesn't have holes at the top, all the better. If it does have holes at the top, that's okay because something else you're also going to need to grab is some clay. Um, we're going to use this clay, so just, just grab some. Play-Doh will work. Uh, any sort of clay you're, you're willing to get wet, you can go ahead and grab that. Uh, if by chance you do have an eyedropper, you can also go ahead and, and get yourself a little nut because uh, we're going to have to use that as a weight. So go ahead and grab that. Um, so your options are eyedropper and a nut or a pen cap uh, with the little pocket pincher down here and some clay. And that is all you'll need to make the Cartesian diver. But in order to make it actually dive, we need a bottle uh, filled as close as you can to the top with water. And I would recommend a second open top container. This comes in handy getting this to work. You're really going to want it. Um, so I'll let you grab those things and we're going to talk about what exactly makes the Cartesian diver work. All right. So I want you to imagine uh, maybe you're at the pool or you're at the beach or you're just going swimming with some friends in like a river. I want you to imagine uh, you go down to the water, you've got a big red ball. Uh, like a, just a, you know, a big red ball or a big red balloon, and you start to push that balloon down into the water, right? As the balloon starts making its way into the water, it's pushing the water out of the way. And it turns out the water pushes back, right? The water's going to be pushing back against you, and it's actually pretty easy to push the balloon in at the beginning, but the more and the more and the more you push that balloon into the water, the more difficult it's going to be because there's more water that's pushing back, right? So what's happening here is the balloon is actually pushing that water out of the way. We would say it's displacing that water. So you can imagine what it's done is it's actually displaced all the water that was here. Now what makes something float is if it can displace its own weight in water before uh, becoming fully immersed in the water. Right? But the more water you displace, the more you're going to float, the more buoyant you are. So I want you to think about if divers were uh, lifting, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say they were doing some underwater archaeology and they found a cool shipwreck, uh, and they were going to lift out, let's grab a different color here, they were going to lift out a little crate. Ooh, my markers dried out. That's no good. They were going to lift a crate from this uh, archaeological dig underwater. Uh, and so they've got a pretty big crate, they need to lift it, they might use a lift bag. So lift bags are basically underwater balloons. Uh, they're open at the bottom, so you can kind of go underneath and fill them with gas. But I just want you to imagine we're using a nice red balloon to lift that crate up off the bottom and towards the surface where we can learn more about that artifact. 
well, if we put a balloon on there and that balloon isn't enough, it's just not lifting the, uh, it's not lifting that crate up, then we would add more air, right? But the adding more air isn't what's making it float more. When you add more air, the balloon expands. And just like what we were talking about, it's displacing even more water. And when it displaces more water, uh, that is making it, uh, as long as it's displacing more than its own weight, uh, that is making it uh, sort of buoyant up above. All right? So the larger uh, space of water we displace, the more you're going to float. Now, this actually applies to how submarines work to a degree, actual submarines. Um, but you'll see when we get to our Cartesian divers how it applies to them. But let's talk about submarines, right? Because submarines carry people down into the ocean, uh, and we want to keep them safe. But I've kind of got like this little cross-section uh, cross of our submarine here. You can see a little person in there. But the submarine actually has two walls. It's probably got more than that. But in between those two walls, it can actually let in water. It can fill itself with water. And so I'm going to draw what it might look like at the surface, right? They don't have much water in there at all. Instead, they've got uh, a lot of air. They are not, uh, not taking on that water. And you can imagine if I tried to push that submarine, if I was like a giant, and I could push that submarine down in the water, I'm having to displace all this water. I'm having to displace uh, this whole cross section. But, if I could fill in this area with water, then I'm displacing less. Then I'm only displacing the very inside. So the way submarines can dive is they've actually got little holes where they can uh, open up and they will let the water flow in and they will let the air flow out. So they actually fill themselves up to some degree with water on the outside. Uh, and they can close those little holes up, and then the way they come back up is they actually have tanks of pressurized air, and they use that air to push the water back out through the bottom. So they're expanding that bubble, and that bubble is what's displacing, what's pushing the water out of the way. So when they expand that bubble uh, and displace that water, it allows them to float back up. That's just really simple in a nutshell. Uh, how the submarine is diving. But hopefully you've had enough time to go grab your supplies because we're going to get started here with our Cartesian divers. Uh, and if you're watching this after the fact, obviously you can just pause uh, while uh, you're going to get your supplies. But I hope you will actually make this. I hope you'll follow along. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple little variants that you can do. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. All right. So first things first, we've got our bottle. I said fill it to the very top, or as close to the top as you could, right? Um, so you want that, you want this open top. And this is actually going to be our little testing uh, pool over here. This is going to be where we get the Cartesian diver uh, properly buoyant. Because if it's, if it's too buoyant, if it actually um, has too much lift, uh, if it floats too much, then that can cause a problem where it won't be able to dive very easily, all right? So this is for getting it just perfect before we put it in here. Because once we put it in here, it's really a pain to get back out. All right, so let's start with the first method that I was telling you about. We're going to take our little eyedropper here, and we are actually going to cut most of this eyedropper off. Um, I'm just going to come in. Let me see if I can zoom here for you. I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to cut off really the last little chunk. In fact, before I cut it, let me show you a trick. Because what I was going to do is cut it and then put this, this uh, the nut on there for weight. But it's actually easier to get that nut on if you leave all this. Because sometimes this is just a little too big over here. Uh, and so if you try to slide that nut down and you've got all this area here to grip and pull on, you can pop it all the way up there. So that's what we want. We want the nut all the way up against the bulb of the eyedropper. Now that we've got that there, I'm going to cut off. I'm leaving just a little bit. You can kind of see. I've left a little bit uh, beyond where the nut is. And so that kind of gives us a little bit extra protection from the nut just falling off. If you have just a really loose, uh, loose Cartesian diver here, um, that can just come right off. So we don't want that. Um, so what we're going to do is now we need to get this just perfectly buoyant. Oop, bring you on over this way. 
In order to do that, I'm going to put it in here and see where it floats. So you can see that weight at the bottom, that's actually pulling the bottom down and it floats nice and upright in the water. But this actually floats a lot. What we want to do is we want to fill this with just enough water that it only barely floats. All right, so I am going to take this and I'm just going to squeeze some of that air out. And when I release it, you can see it pulled that water up inside and it still floats, but it's floating a little lower. So I'm going to do that again. And oh, it's pulled even more water in and there it's just barely floating. But if I tap it, it does come back up. You want it to come back up. All right, so that is uh, our first little Cartesian diver there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this in the bottle. All right, oops. Back over to the whiteboard there. So what I'm going to do is just open this up and take my Cartesian diver and just drop it right in. There we go. Let's see if I can zoom in so you can see what happens. So because it's open at the bottom, something cool is going to happen here when I squeeze this bottle. As I squeeze the bottle, I'm not sure if you can see. Oh, let me, let me really zoom in. Let me go turn my light off so we don't have that reflection. Because as I squeeze the bottle, it's actually going to squeeze the bubble inside the Cartesian diver. It's going to make that bubble smaller. Let's see if I can block that light. Okay, so you can see the bubble up at the top of the Cartesian diver, that lighter spot. As I squeeze the bottle, that bubble's actually getting a little smaller. Now, you remember what I said, like a smaller balloon is not as buoyant as a bigger balloon, because the bigger balloon is pushing more water out of the way. So a smaller bubble in this Cartesian diver is not as buoyant as a larger bubble. So as we squeeze that bottle and the bubble gets smaller and smaller, that bubble is actually doing less and less to lift the Cartesian diver out of the water and eventually it just falls down. And if I let go of the bottle, it comes right back up. So let me zoom out and show you that real quick again. All I'm doing is I am squeezing the bottle and eventually I'll squeeze it enough that the Cartesian diver will sink. And then if I let go of that pressure, it comes right back up to the top. All we're doing is changing the size of the bubble inside the Cartesian diver. Uh, and that lets it uh, sink or float. Smaller bubble, sinks. Bigger bubble, it floats. It's that easy. All right, so maybe you don't have an eyedropper at home. That's okay. What we're going to do is we are going to make that second method here, and that is with the pen cap. So uh, I'm actually going to, I got two here. I think I'm going to make two of each Cartesian diver. But I've got a little pen cap here, and you might be able to see at the top, there are some little holes up there. Um, so take a look at your pen cap, because if there's holes at the top, that's not good. We don't want the air to whoosh, escape out the top. Um, so what you can do is take that clay and just take like the tiniest, tiniest little piece of clay. All right. And what we're going to do, let me move this out of the way until we're ready for it. What we're going to do is just take that tiny, tiny little piece of clay and smush it onto the tip there to block all those holes. And you can even like really smush it and then kind of twist off the excess clay. So let me zoom in here. You might be able to see uh, what I've got going on here. Let's just try to focus for you. There you go. So you can see I've blocked up those holes with the clay, and now the air can't get out there. What I'm also going to do is take more clay. You remember how we used the nut on the, uh, the eyedropper Cartesian diver to sort of act as a little ballast weight, a little weight uh, to drag this part down and then the part with the bubble in it can float up. If I just put this in the water right now, it's just going to float like that. It's going to be on its side, which is not what we want. So I'm going to take some clay here uh, and you kind of, you know, it's not an exact science uh, with it, but you are going to uh, put that clay on the little pocket pincher part. You see how I just stuck it on there? So I've got this, I'm just going to wrap that clay nice and tight around the pocket pincher. We don't want to block up the hole at the bottom of the eyedropper. All right? We still want to be able to see that hole uh, so that we can squeeze the bubble inside by squeezing the bottle. But you want to put clay on there. And then the goal is to, again, get it so it just barely floats. Let's see where we are. Oh, too much clay. All right, so if you put too much clay on, uh, it'll do that. And actually, it looked like I might have had a little leak at the top there. So I'm just going to take a little more clay uh, and put that on the top. All right, but I'm going to take some clay off the bottom. So I've got less clay. Ooh, it's just 
barely floating, which is what we want. We want it to just barely be floating. Um, but again, we want that bottom to still be open. That way it can uh, squeeze the bubble inside. All right, let's see if I can get this one to work. Now, the fun thing about having multiple Cartesian divers in the same bottle is uh, they'll actually usually dive at different squeezing pressures. Um, and that's just because, you know, they've got a little more, a little less air in them. So let's see, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put my Cartesian diver in there. All right, it's just barely floating. Screw that cap back on and let's see if I can make that one dive. I can, and you can see it dives just a little. In fact, I can do this. This is fun. If you've got two, see if you can get one to dive and the other one not to dive. So I'm just doing that by gradually changing how much I'm shifting the bottle. Another challenge is to try to get one Cartesian diver to just hover right in the middle of the bottle. You got to kind of do that just by squeezing and then releasing just ever so carefully. All right. Another thing you could do, uh, and let me demonstrate why I say uh, we want this second chamber, because now that I've got these in here, uh, getting them out is, is really a, a challenge um, without just spilling that water everywhere. So I'm going to leave those in there, but I have another eyedropper Cartesian diver here. What I'm going to do is I have a piece of wire. Um, you use a piece of wire or you can use like a really small, small paper clip. It's got to be pretty small though, okay? Because if it's too big, it's too much weight. But I'm going to take this piece of wire, I'm going to wrap it around where the nut is a couple times, and then I'm going to bring it down here. You can see that little piece of wire dangling off the bottom. And I'm going to make just the tiniest little hook. Really teeny tiny little hook. So you can see that tiny hook there. And then what you can do is either take more wire, or I, I did use a little paper clip uh, in this, and you're going to make kind of a little mess of loops. You want a bunch of loops that all go different directions, so that when it's lying down, there's at least a loop that's uh, on its side. Because the goal now is that we will squeeze the Cartesian diver, get it to dive down, and then by kind of shifting the bottle, by tilting the bottle, we'll try to uh, actually hook that and bring it up to the top. All right, so you, let's see. I, I'm gonna just totally embarrass myself now, I'm sure, and not be able to get it. Um, the fact that I've got a bunch of Cartesian divers in there is gonna make this interesting. Whoa, I almost put the, uh, the hook Cartesian diver in there without checking its uh, buoyancy. Now here's the thing, you really want this to float more than if you weren't gonna be using it to grab something because it needs to be able to float enough that it can pull that object back up to the top. So let's see, where's my loop at? The loop is right down at the front, uh, whoop, right over here. Let's see if I can get my Cartesian divers. That one doesn't have the hook. That one doesn't have the hook. Oh, there's the hook one, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this in the camera. Oh, the Cartesian divers are getting in the way. So there might be such a thing as too many Cartesian divers in a bottle. Oh, but lo and behold, I got it. Let me zoom out, but you can see right there, I managed to snag that target and I'm gonna just bring it right back on up to the top, along with all my other Cartesian divers. Whoop. Keep going on over to that whiteboard. Just wanna talk about submarines more. Uh, hopefully, you have been following along. You know, if you made one of these, if, if you've made one before, uh, I'm glad that there's more people out there making them. I think they're just a fun little craft, a fun little activity. If you made this by following our video, uh, go ahead and share it online. Uh, you know, if you've got a Twitter account, post it up on there. Use the hashtag Telequarium. We would love to see uh, the little setups you've got. You can, like, use, uh, you know, paint pens to draw on your little Cartesian divers, give them all sorts of little designs, maybe slap a face on there, have them be a little scuba diver. Uh, I'd love to see what you put together. And also, if you do have a little game in there where you're trying to hook something, uh, be sure you post if you manage to get it hooked. And uh, we would love to see that on Twitter as well. So hashtag Telequarium. And uh, I think that's about it for today's Telequarium program. But I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you followed along or uh, are at least inspired to maybe do this craft in the future. 
and uh, hopefully we'll see you for the next Teleaquarium. We're doing these every day on our YouTube channel, uh, the Alaska Sea Life Center's YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash AKC Life Center. Uh, and again, if you want to know more about the Alaska Sea Life Center, if you want to know more about our mission, uh, about the science that goes on here at the Sea Life Center, about the animals that we have, you can visit our website, which is alaskasealife.org. Uh, and down in the description, we actually have a link straight to our donate page if you're enjoying these programs every day. We would love to uh, hear from you, how you might be taking advantage of these programs, maybe in your own teaching or even just around the house, you know, having fun with your youngins. But uh, thank you so much for joining today. And we'll see you next time.